first of all, when I uh, when I was named head coach a couple years ago, uh, challenged our team, uh, challenged our coaching staff with the three numbers of 50, 26, and 10. And put them on the board and talked to our guys about what they meant. At that point, it had been 50 years since we won the Big Ten, 26 years since we won the bowl game, and 10 years since we had a winning season. And I told our team, told our coaches, we're going to accomplish all three of those. And uh, if you don't believe we're going to do that, you need to leave. And I was very honest and open and sincere about it. Um, when they won't take it personal, they didn't believe, I didn't want them here. Because I want a coaching staff and a football team that believes. And those numbers grew to um, 52, 28, 12 as this season started. We just knocked off the last one tonight, which makes it a big, big deal getting that seventh win to secure a winning season here in Indiana for sure, first time in 12 years. We got a chance to knock off uh, the next one here later on when we go to our bowl game. So this is a very hungry football team um, that is not satisfied with where they are. And uh, I don't think they're shocked by what they're doing. They expected it. And uh, there's no question that not a, not a lot of people felt that way or believed in us, and that's okay. It never, it never mattered to us by your muscle blinders in this program. And uh, <clears throat> just really proud of our guys, proud of how, how they fight, the grit they showed. Shoot, we started the game with two stinking offside penalties on our offense. We get first and 20 against a very good defense and didn't blink. Drove right down the field, got us three points and, and uh, got, got rolling. So just really proud of the resilience and the toughness and the fight of this team, the grit that we have that we show each and every week. We're getting better every time we take the field. Probably was our most complete game to, to date. Um, and uh, to get four Big Ten wins in a row is, is pretty, uh, pretty special. And so just congratulations to our coaching staff. I thought King Lama did a phenomenal job uh, calling the defense today, and uh, Kayla and the board continues to do a great job. And uh, our offensive staff and defensive staff, the guys have worked extremely hard, and that will not stop. So uh, a lot of good performances tonight, but it was a team win, and uh, very excited about getting number seven. It means a lot to this program. Question? Zach? You talked about your team not being satisfied, not being surprised, but they haven't had, as, this, as a group together, this kind of success, obviously with the win total, but also kind of the stretch you're on here. How have they kind of managed maybe some of the intangible stuff through that together to make nights like tonight not even sort of seem, just seem very routine, I guess? Well, I think there's a very purposeful approach with our coaching staff, with our guys. Yeah, it's uncharted territory for, um, for this team and our program, but at the same time, I'm telling you, we recruited a bunch of guys that came here to do the very thing we're doing right now. And uh, that's why you know, when I talk to these guys and, and challenge them about what's next and where we want to be and what we're trying to accomplish, that uh, they just have the mindset that, hey, coach, that's why we came here. So uh, we expected this to happen. Didn't know when it was going to happen. I always, every, you know, the last, and I believe it was going to happen my first year, okay, and it did not. I believe it was going to happen year two. And I knew we were really young last year. It was going to be challenging to do to do some of these things, but uh, um, it didn't happen. So we just we didn't. Uh, it was very disappointing, but uh, we didn't get discouraged. We didn't hang our heads. We just rolled our sleeves up and went back to work. We kept recruiting, we kept developing, and we kept fighting. And that's where our grit comes into this year. That's our one word for a reason: the perseverance and passion towards a long-term goal. And that's what this team has. And they showed it again tonight. And like you said, it was just a very systematic. Uh, dominant performance by our football team in all three phases against a very mature team that's played a brutal schedule. Coach, Coach Fitz is, a, is one of my guys I look up to so much in this conference. I have so much respect for him. And his kids play so hard, they're physical, they're tough, they're big, they're strong, and uh, um, they've just had a bunch of tough losses and, and uh, played with a really, really, you know, uphill <coughs> battle schedule-wise. And it makes it hard sometimes. It's a fine line in this league. And so I fully understand that. So to me, it's about understanding that we've got uh, big goals for this place, and uh, I came here with that belief, and it has not changed. And so uh, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, and it's not been easy. And uh, we just got to stay the course, keep working to get better each and every week. Enjoy the bye week. It's going to be critical that we get healthy and get uh, get better this week. Do a lot of recruiting, but at the same time, uh, these guys are they're on a mission, and I'm, I'm proud of them. Tom and Randy, coach, just have to ask you uh, what went into. Uh, the decision to start Mike tonight and how he was, and then uh, what, if anything, there was that happened when we had to come up? 
Yeah, you know, the decision to start Mike was, was pretty simple. You know, I've been, been kind of frank with that situation. You know, he was a starter, and as soon as he's healthy to play, then he, he would, would come back and be the starter when he was able to go, and he was able to go this week, so we went with him, and then he got dinged up there right before half, and, and so we'll know more about that tomorrow. But uh, once again, you know, Peyton Ramsey just continues to be um, just a great teammate, great player for us, and, and uh, you know, we've had two quarterbacks that have played almost equal amount of time, I think, if you look at the exact quarters and time of, of, of out there. So they're both a huge part of our, our program, and uh, I'm very proud of both of them. So just uh, great to have two. Coach, um, you talked about this this year, but you have passed about finishing. I think I have this right, but you guys have given like 30 some points in the fourth quarter all year. Six of those came on the two key plays, so it's great out. Please tell you how your defense seems to get stronger to get into the ball. Well, very pleased. I mean, that's the key. I mean, that, and that, cause that's the big that's the big thing we, we were, you know, not able to do in the past. It was to be able to finish. And I, you know, I got asked that question a thousand times. I got sick and tired of answering it. You know, but it's it's a fair question because we never we did you know those close games and you don't win them. You know, you don't finish. And so, you know, but uh, it's obviously been uh, a huge point of emphasis. It's been a huge part of uh, us trying to make sure that we. We can make, and my answer would always be consistent. It's, you got to make critical plays in those times of the game. The last five minutes of the game, you got to get the key stops. You got to get the key execution on offense. You got to get the big plays. You got to make the tough catches. You got to make the contested runs. And when they're loading the box or whatever they're doing to, to try and stop that key situation, and, and it's, it's depth. It's uh, our guys just in, in the year older, more mature. It's our weight room. It's our strength staff, the job that they do. They play a huge role in the fourth quarter mindset, and our conditioning, and our strength, the confidence we have. And we're getting stronger every single time we go in that weight room. It's impressive. The way our guys work, I mean, I've never been a part of a team that works this hard during the season in the weight room. And that's the buy-in is so high right now because they believe that that staff in there knows exactly what they're doing. If they do exactly what they tell them to do, they're going to get bigger, faster, stronger, even during the season. And that just creates a ton of confidence for us to run the football like we have to in the second half, finish games conditionally in terms of the speed and burst of the football and be able to make those critical plays. So there's a lot of things that go into it. And then I'm just proud of our coaches too. They're just doing a great job of working on to tirelessly figure out what we can do to, to be able to finish out well and, and get the result that we want. Matt Cohen and Sam, if following up on that, I, I want to volunteer from you just to get that and better see what you have in multiple first half and some ball in multiple first how have you progressed from you know, a true freshman to where he is now in the position? Well, he, when he first was here, you know, he was basically just a, a situational guy to, to put man to man on one of their top guys late in the game, or not late in the game, but during the game. So he didn't know the whole defense to be able to play, you know, f you know, completely during the series. And then as the season progressed, he's now gotten to where he knows, you know, the, all the things he has to do to play the zone coverages, the match man, the true zone, the the man coverage that we're playing, all the checks and adjustments that they go along with it. So it just took some time. And then as the season kind of progressed, we, we grew his role. But he's always been, you know, from the beginning, he's been a playmaker. And uh, he, he's a special player. He's also got a special, you know, mindset. You know, he grabbed me tonight. He's like, Coach, this is what I told you we were going to do, you know, when we came here. He's like, he's the kid that wrote down those three numbers in my XB I had with him when he came on the official visit. So he uh, he's a very confident young man. And uh, he just keeps getting better, like our team does. And his role, like you said, keeps growing. And, and he's just, a, you know, he's got a great knack for the ball. He just has a, and he's a, he created that first takeaway, you know, of the game, which is, a, you know, those kind of things are huge. They got a big long run in the first play of the game, and he breaks that ball right out of there with great technique. And, and then um, a lot of key breakups, and he just being, being to Taiwan, he just does. Sam, you guys got Coach Steve Scott went over 100 yards again. We were very frustrated at first. Um, I know we had the, you guys asked me questions, and you should. Uh, but I do feel like that there was a concerted effort by the teams we were playing to just make sure Stevie Scott did not beat, beat them. And so they were loading the box, and they were making sure, and he was getting, you know, impatient, and he was trying to bounce a lot of runs and, and try to make those big plays and get through his yards. And, and so it was kind of a, a dual, you know, you know, reason for why he wasn't getting the production that we were used to seeing from him. But he got, he learned a lot. Coach Hart did a great job of teaching him and how to handle this and, 
and to be more patient with his runs. And then he started running harder, a little more confidence. And now our old line just keeps getting better and better each and every week. Even though, like you said, we played against we played some, get some really good run defenses that still have been able to consistently run the football um, in the way that we know we need to. So I just think in the past game, you know, he just really worked on that with his ball skills and tons of catches and in the off season and after practice, before practice, and jug machines and just trying to get to where he's a, a weapon in the past game, just like he was again tonight. You know, they load the box and you flare him out there and you pop it outside, he goes for a touchdown. So, you know, just uh, his, he's in his pass pro. I mean, he's a great pass protector. You know, he's a big boy, but uh, he's unselfish. And that's a big part. Matter of fact, we used him in one of our pre, during fall camp, you know, I, I do a lot of, I read a lot of books and, and use a lot of books to teach our players about the kind of team we're trying to develop. And one of them was about um, an unselfish running back at the NFL level, what that looks like and, and how those guys have to be great pass blockers as well as, you know, receiving the football and out of the backfield as well as running the ball. And he bought into that, you know, and just trying to give them real life examples of guys and how our guys need to whether it's play on special teams as a, as a starter. I believe in that. And those guys, there are guys who bought into that. Nick Westbrook, same thing. He does, he does, he does drills for special teams every single week because he knows he wants to play at the next level, and he knows he's going to have to be a special teams guy at that at that point. And so he does all those drills, even though he doesn't take off a ton of reps at it. But that's the that's the kind of buy-in our guys. They they believe what we tell them, and uh, they're doing it. So Stevie's just been uh, getting better and better. Yeah, and then we'll close with Jim. Obviously, we already talked fast about uh, Tywan Mullen uh, since that strip, but uh, Alfred. Lance Bryant right before the end of the half. Like yeah. I know it was a play that you know, counts. Still counts for the takeaway. Yeah, I mean, in terms of yes, it does. riding into that half with some momentum, I mean, how much yeah. does that Well, that's you. I mean, you know, you, we knew they were going to get the ball in the third quarter, and, you know, you, you, know, you guys watch us play, so we've had some end of the half, you know, times we've given up points, and it's, it's happened, and it's hard, and it, it kills you going in to halftime. And so I, we've been working so hard on that. And obviously, you got to balance it out. You know, how much time's on the clock, and what do they need? And, you don't want to give up field goal. You don't want to give any momentum at all. They only have three points. And then, you know, we're trying to, they're going to take a shot. They're going to try and flip the ball around a little bit. We, uh, we kind of thought they might do something like that because of the distance they had to go. And that's what they did. And so we got a chance to, to get a cheap takeaway, but we'll take it for sure. But it was just, uh, it's momentum. You know, it's kind of, you saw the guys ran off the field, you know, and that's, uh, that's what it takes. It's a game of momentum, a game of understanding how to finish. It's playing team football, all three phases working together. And uh, you know, we got three now to start the second half. Offense goes down, and uh, we just finished them off from there. So just really proud of the way our guys are playing complimentary team football. Jim, last one. Coach, you guys have scored 30 or more points in six straight games, eight of the nine that you've played this year. Talk about what having that kind of consistency does for the team, for the staff, and for the defense. Well, you know, it, it creates a lot of confidence. You know, that uh, it's hard in today's game. It's hard to hold a team three points. It's hard to get shutouts. It's hard to hold people to even seven, ten points anymore. So uh, um, to know that you got a chance to score 30 plus points every game, uh, no matter who we play, uh, it's pretty awesome. You know, and uh, gives uh, our whole team you know, become our expectation. You know, and uh, uh, we know we got to continue to work hard to, to stay to that level. But uh, it's a tribute to, to Kevin DeBoer and his offensive system he brought to us, and our coaches that have bought into that, and players as well, and maximizing our roster and our, the talent that we have. And, and so just credit to him for the job that he's doing. And so uh, you know, he's, uh, he's been a game changer for us and, and a huge part of our success. So really proud of Caleb. All right, thanks, Tom. Awesome. Have a great night. Elio.